Welcome to Inside Design with Kandrak and Cole. This podcast is a conversation between two business partners, Joanne Kandrak and Kelly Cole. Join us for a lively conversation about all things interior design, from current projects, trade show experiences, worldwide travel, what's in, what's out, and all the challenges and wins they've had running their successful design business. Whether you're a seasoned interior designer, new to the industry, or a creative enthusiast, you will walk away with insightful information, newfound inspiration, and a smile on your face after listening to these two. And here they are, Joanne and Kelly. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Inside Design with Kendrick and Cole. This is Joanne Kendrick. And today's episode, we are answering your design questions. So 172 episodes later, yes. six years doing this, our analytics show us that this is one of the top episodes that yeah. you guys really love Pick when we brain. answer your questions. Yep. Because really, as um, fascinating and great as interior design is, it's also very challenging. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of things that people, uh, I think they don't do because number one, they don't know what to do. So they're Mm -hmm. paralyzed or they just, they get, they get stuck. They can't, they don't understand what they need to do. So, you know, it's funny. Um, Emery, my daughter called me last night and she said she was at this Thanksgiving friends giving with all of her friends in Chicago who were all in their late twenties, early thirties. And she had this long discussion with one of her girlfriends who owns a beautiful brownstone in Chicago. And she was like, I can't afford an interior designer. And, but how do I even like know what conversations to have? She was like, I want to change like my kitchen countertops. I don't even know the language. I don't even know where to go. I don't even know what to look for. Like there's so much stuff that to us is, is like ABCs, but the general person doesn't know. And when you want to make your home nice, but you just don't even, you know, you're paralyzed. And I, I honestly have to say, HGTV and some of these channels don't really they don't ha- help. They don't help they don't us help out. I just watched, yeah. I started watching something last night and it was so far fetched for the pricing yeah. that I just thought, well, you know what? This show, the the, the, the countertop people are giving them a deal. And so the, the, the real people don't know that mm-hmm. that's not what it costs. Yeah. So anyway. Um, We're going to dig so, in and help you guys out today. Yeah. So we're happy to help yep. because we know that probably some of these questions, most people probably have. So yeah. we're hoping that we can help you out. So um, today's sponsor. Yes. Sorry. Brain lapse. It's it's <laughs> the holidays and, you know. Anyway, so today our podcast is sponsored by Atlanta's America's Mart. Thank you, guys. Um, Atlanta Market is the only wholesale product discovery experience that gives designers more. It's held in January and July at America's Mart here in Atlanta. And it's the only, it's a trade to the trade only marketplace to discover new resources and connect with thousands of makers, manufacturers, and sales reps ready to help build your business. So our team is gearing up to visit all the fun events and networking opportunities that they offer. We really love going to the Atlanta market in January just to kick off the year with like-minded business owners and creatives. And it's just the perfect place to start the year, get inspired by fabrics and colors and design forward product that we can use with our clients. So if you go Register ahead. It'll make your life a whole lot easier. You can do that at atlantamarket.com. And don't forget that um, they've got a lot of floors um, that are temporaries. They're kind of like pop-up shops. And we love those Mm -hmm. because it's where we find kind of like new people. And jewelry. And jewelry, of course, (laughs) and some fashion. And so um, we see some of our, our uh, people that we see in High Point, we see people that we see at Scott's Antique Market, yep. and so there's also, um, don't forget, on on five floors now, they have a whole casual and outdoor furnishings section, so get ahead of spring and summer for sure, and check them out. The yep. next one is January 16th to the 21st. And it is kind of maybe like a little mini high point because they do it have, is, they have, some, sure. pa- they yeah, have yeah. some panels and yep. there's always a little, you know, there's education food and parties and, yep. and education. And yeah, so it's great. I mean, you really yeah. can't miss it if you're, if you're yeah, in we're, the area. We're very lucky in Atlanta to have 
to have that mm-hmm. access to that. Yeah. Okay. Right, ready to kick off? So, you know, we reached out like we always do via Instagram, Facebook. Um, we actually had a question from one of the people that was on our insiders tour. So the mm-hmm. questions kind of come from everywhere. And we do have this speak pipe um option option on our website, website that's mm-hmm. a little button that has a camera that or a little microphone and it says talk to us and you can literally record and we used to get people to do this i don't know why people are afraid people are to shy. do I this because i feel I like, like to hear their voices i like i feel like it's more of like a radio show yeah. like <laughs> okay so caller number six what's yours and then you hear their voice and they ask the question so if we do it again people just please just it's, just your, it's just your voice we're not yeah. going to see your face yeah so Russ has it up on the screen so you can kind of yes, see. Yes, there you go. Talk, talk to us on the right hand side. You've got like 30, 45 seconds. Yeah, I mean, you can say hi. You know, this yeah. is it. So, anyway, so, you know, nobody wanted to, show, you know, well, let us hear their voice or show their face. So, here we go. So, the first one is Julie. Mm-hmm. She's She came by Instagram. Okay. She said, when layering rugs in a large space, yes. is the bottom sisal jute or wool? Okay. Can I use two on top to define areas? Great question. Yes. And I have to say, where I see this more than anywhere mm-hmm. is at show houses. They do such a good job. Yes. What you'll normally see, generally like a really big room, and it will usually be a sisal or a jute as the Natural bottom woven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bottom layer. And then on top of that one, of course, a little smaller, will be probably like a wool or an oriental or layered that way. Yes. And you can definitely use two different ones if your room is really big and you're mm-hmm. kind of separating the areas. I've even seen runners mm-hmm. where you've gotten a jute or a, um, yeah, like a jute or sisal runner and then something over that. So I think it's a great way to use mm-hmm. rugs. I think the key, what, what I like it the most mm-hmm. is when both of the rugs are kind of thin. I mean, you could put a, yeah. a shaggier one on top. It would be totally fine. But I but generally when I see them, I, I love to see like a, um, a a very easy, simple woven on the bottom. And that and take that, you know, generally our rule is at least 12 to 24 inches from the borders of the room. And I like okay? the furniture to sit on it most of the time, depending I, I on the space. Yes. And then on top of that, if you just want to add some texture, some color, maybe just underneath the coffee table or to separate two spaces in a very large room. I love the Ushaks, mm-hmm. the 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 Turkish mm-hmm. rugs, that yeah. those thinner um, old timey woven rugs mix. Those it's really just a, look the it's best. Such a pretty combination. And the ones that have the baby fringe. Yes. At the ends, mm-hmm. I think that's a really that's a really designer look. It, it really is. The I, average I, person probably wouldn't know to do that. Yeah. That's one of the reasons we love to go to show houses because we see so much of that. Well, and you and, have you know you've got the cost of your hardwoods, and then you've got not only the cost yeah, of one area yeah. rug, but two. So, you know, it is it is a commitment. But man, that layering is it's it's well, what makes a room. You know what another like it can be kind of smart too. Let's say, for example, you found that Ushak or you have that Turkish rug that's a certain size, but it's not quite big enough. Yes. For your furniture to go on top of it. That's a great way to put that underneath mm-hmm. so that all the furniture then you still get the beauty of the pattern mm-hmm. and the texture without having to, you know, go 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 custom. Yes. And get a bigger size. So yeah. that's always smart too. Yeah, very good okay. question. All right, next from Heather, who texted us from our insider tour group chat. She said, I would like to know how you combat what I call construction fatigue with your clients. Do you do anything while construction is going on to help when your clients are frustrated by changes and change orders during construction? I do lots of remodels and renovation, and it is not if, but when there is something we must change or pivot on. Heather, oh. this is like the best question we've we ever had. We feel your pain. We feel you, honey. Like we're with you 100%. So I, I feel like we have a lot of answers to this question. Yeah, because <clears throat> you're right. It's not if, it's when. It's mm-hmm. just, it, I hate to say it, but it's kind of like the nature of it. There's all, you know, you don't know what's sometimes behind these walls. Mm-hmm. Or um, w- w- like s- some of the changes that happen mm-hmm. are... It, like, it's it's just constant. Let, let's preface this by saying before a remodel starts, okay, or new construction, but a, let's just talk about remodels because they're cray cray right now. Everybody's doing them. Um, we always preface a few things to our clients and just say, take a big deep breath and take your patient pills. This is going to be not 
the funnest thing, okay? If your house is going to be torn upside down, uh, inside out, you may want to consider getting in a rental and moving out, especially if you have pets or small children. The upheaval to but, your family is a lot. But yes, the flip side to that is you want to be checking on what is going on. Oh, well, that was my next thing is, yeah, you want to rent so nearby for sure. Um, I do think that we always have to remind our clients that while you have a very competent GC and while we are always here to check on things and be available, you as the homeowner, as the one paying the bill, have got to keep your eye on things. Things just come up and it's just nice. You don't want to, you know, micromanage the contractors and the subs and you don't want to breathe down their necks. But, you know, at the end of the day, every day, a couple times a week, I would definitely check in and maybe send a follow-up email on Friday and just like, say just a few things that are on my mind. Yeah. Please take care of these and then and then let them do their job and walk away. Yeah. Sometimes stupid things kind of fall through the cracks mm -hmm. too. Like, oh God, this is no pun intended. But the grout. Sometimes they will use the wrong grout. Mm -hmm. And just because who knows why. We're 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 really good about keeping a construction binder where we have all of the items, you know, the tile, the manufacturer, the grout color, whatever, so that there aren't, but somehow for some reason, these things sometimes still happen. Mm -hmm. So you do have to be paying attention, but I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's, um, there's just the nature of it. It's the nature of it. But one thing that we do, Heather, that I think calms everybody down and, and helps our clients breathe a little bit is, Anytime we we budget in our in our project management cost to the client um, a certain amount of visits to the house, and then inevitably we go over because we just we're nearby. We want to check in, and we're not there to get anybody in trouble. We're just checking in, just mm -hmm. looking at everything, making sure we're yeah. doing you know the selections that we made were good and everything's going smoothly, and we will then follow up with a detailed email to the homeowner and the GC and just say, site visit notes from today. You know, one, this is looking awesome. Thanks so much. You know, two, um, please double check, you know, the linear drain in the guest bathroom looks slightly crooked. The pebble tile is not abutting to the linear drain. Please check, you know, three, you know, whatever. Um, so it just and, keeps, ev there's a written documentation of that. It just, it, we put it in our, in our site visit notes, in our binder so that we, when next time we go, we'll check up on those things as well. It just puts everybody at ease. Yeah. And I think our clients, you know, kind of want to, you know, base they or will come to us to say, well, they did this today. Is that? you know, what do you think about that? So they're always kind of asking us our opinions and and we will give those. Nine times out of 10, it wasn't something that they really understood. So we can say, yes, this is how they do that. So being a sounding board, I think, and and have, having their, be there for that communication, I think makes them feel better. Mm -hmm. Because if, you know, they, they can't all, the, the contractor may not always be there. His subs are there and they are, they're not really sure what's happening. So, just for us to be there to be the sounding board, I think really makes them feel better. Yes. Yeah. I mean, communication is what it all boils down to. And, you know, I I think sometimes it just takes a calm voice besides the contractor to say, I know you're 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 frustrated that the the glass contractor um is three weeks behind, but this is just, it's a crazy time of year right now. And, um, you know, yeah. they, they have to come and template. All the tile has to be done before that glass can be measured for so that it's absolutely yeah. level and the right size. So it's something that can't be scheduled ahead of time. And then you have yeah. to get on that contractor's schedule. And if so you, those yeah. little things that the client, you know, uh, doesn't know how would they even know that, and the contractor yeah. might not have the communication skills that you yeah, do. Yeah, I think I think a good contractor would have, and I think it is really important because I didn't always know these things until we started doing this. Is what's the production workflow? What comes after? What comes next? Like, mm -hmm. where do you start, and what comes next? And then, like Kelly said, they can't come and template until that part is done. So there's always you know, these time frames, it isn't that the guy just didn't want to show up or mm -hmm. th there's usually a method to the madness. So the, 
you know, the, the more you can tell them on the front end about how things are going to go will just make them feel better. Mm -hmm. Getting ghosted or no communication is not oh, God, a, not it's a the good worst. thing. We, we really over communicate. It's the so. worst. Yep. So, um, but I think we're all in it. Like it's just, it's just how it goes. And you just, you know, you just have to do your due diligence and have the best GC you can and then keep that communication and put it in writing. And we also have a group chat when we have, when we have a, a remodel going on, we have a group chat with the, both the homeowners and and us, us and the GC in a text so that if somebody wants to send a quick image or FaceTime real quickly and say, hey, I'm here with the electrician. Is anybody available? I need a height on this. Then we're all on the same page and it's just, it's just nice. Yeah. So try yeah. that. Yep. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So our next question comes from Christina via Instagram. This is a very interesting question. Okay. Has your experience designing live in, living spaces impacted your taste in clothing? Well, well, we usually dress very colorfully. Mm -hmm. I do love color. We yes. do love color. And so I know there's some people I know that, you know, their wardrobe is like usually black and white. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that a lot of people, even in their homes, like are as, as bold with color as we kind of mm -hmm. are. I, I would say we're bold. And mm -hmm. that does translate, I guess, to what we design in our living spaces. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell a lot from somebody by what they wear. Absolutely. You know, it really just, absolutely, it just shows their, their personality in so many ways. I think for us, our fashion choices are influenced by all the creatives that we surround ourselves with. So when we are going to on all the travel events. that we do and events and we're all around all of our designer friends who dress 10 times better than us, um, you know, we're constantly inspired and seeing new things. And, and so it just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I think it comes with the territory. And we, you know, we love jewelry, love it. We love accessories. And so, you know, yeah. that, I guess that's, you know, when you're, when you're doing a space, we always feel like the accessories are kind of the finishing touches. Mm -hmm. And so, so they we, are for your we like body as well. Finishing touches. So yeah, yeah it, it definitely does. I think mm -hmm. fashion and, and, um, you design know, go, hand design hand. go hand in hand for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Melanie reached out via Facebook. What are the best questions to ask when interviewing an interior designer? There's oh, God, the list yeah. is so long. But let's 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 just give you, you know, well, like for, the top right. five. So let's say you're going to interview, let's say three. OK. okay. Um, of course, the first thing you'd want to do was, is check out their website, their social media, mm -hmm. their their portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, and we do too, a lot of people have testimonials on their website. Yeah. Do um, a lot of stalking ahead of do time. Do a lot of stalking ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people will say to us, they looked at our website, There's, I mean, we're front and center on the page, and they say that we looked like we'd be very nice. <laughs> I mean, it sounds kind of crazy. Approachable and friendly. Yes. yes. So, you know, if that's what you're looking for, you can really tell. I think you can narrow it down yeah. by the websites first off. Yes. Once you get to that part, you know, the question, I guess a lot of the questions are, um, you know, budget. Do you have a, you have a minimum? Because a lot of people do. Uh, what is your, what is your workload like right now, depending mm -hmm. on if you want something done quickly? Uh, how, how, what is your process? Right. And that's where I think we spend the most amount of time because everybody does it differently. All right, God, uh, you can pipe in. I would say, um, first and foremost, my, what always gets me when I reach out to somebody is how quickly do they respond to me? So if I've called you or emailed oh, you, oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, like just just a little yeah. preface to the questions is how quickly did they respond and how friendly were they and open were they when they responded? I, I'm always put off immediately yeah. um, if I don't like your tone on the phone or you don't yeah. respond quickly to me yeah. or um, you're not I, thorough in your in your. I, I will say time with me many times people will say thank you for getting back to me so quickly. Mm -hmm. I think you've already to me you've already helped yourself mm -hmm. by by responding quickly so that yes. that's the thing that you're looking for because you think about it if it took them three days to get back to you at the beginning you know what's their communication like? yeah 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 but i think definitely i would ask everything joanne just said um kind of you know what's your process how do you how do you um 
uh, sorry, what's your what's your timeline like? I I wouldn't really come out the shoot like talking money because I mean, unless that's your number one. What when, when clients call us and the first thing they want to know is what do you charge and does the consultation fee go towards anything and blah 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 blah. It's kind of a turnoff because we're so much more than you know the value of an interior designer is let's talk about your home first let's talk about what you're trying to accomplish in your home and what and what you want done and then and then we'll you know and then our value will come through and you'll pay you'll you'll pay appropriately but you know what i mean yeah. it's yeah. it's but it is people do people you want to know and you definitely want to ask it I think but i people might have, not be my first because question. people have no idea yeah people really have no idea yeah um what else i would ask um you know, how do you, how do you purchase things? Are you, do you buy products for your clients through retail sources or do you have a lot of um, custom and, and unique ways to buy purchase, you know, to buy things for, for your clients? Mm -hmm. I think that says a lot. There's, mm -hmm. there's decorators and there's designers and there's people that only buy, you know, will, can do a nice job with the retail sources, um, but then there's others that are, you know, far above that. So it just depends on what you want. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I think um, I think they can tell a lot by that first phone call. It's so funny. I was just reading in Business of Home this morning the question they asked seven or eight designers: Do they charge a consultation fee? Mm -hmm. And that's one question that comes up. And it was funny because one person said that the first ten minute call is free. Mm -hmm. And then they charge after that. Some don't charge. So mm. I think if they're interviewing three mm. and, you know, one one charges and the other two don't, there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. Or they all charge. Like, you know, so there's there's little things that you can find out. if, you, And you have to be pretty perceptive. Yeah, you do. I would be when, very weary of any designer that does not charge for a consultation mm -hmm. fee because... Especially I just don't Atlanta see because we're how that's even place. possible. I mean, we Lisa in our office will literally talk to a new prospect for an, a solid hour on the phone, um, really nailing down if you're qualified to work with us, if we're qualified to work with you, what you want, and and really making sure that we're a perfect fit. We really invest in that time, and we would never charge for that. But when we step out the door, we come to your house, and we drive 15, 30, 45 an hour, and um, spend yeah. quite a bit of time with you, an hour to two hours, of course we charge for that time. There's great value yeah. there. Yeah. So that would be a very important question. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Melanie, oh, we, we got a hustle. Really five All minutes right. left. All right. Uh, okay. Okay. All right, go. Well, let's go. Let's go to Robert because okay. we don't usually have very many okay. men. Okay. And he said, "I find the water restrictions in current plumbing fixtures confusing. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what I should be looking for?" I know the restrictions are not fun right now. Yeah. These are things that I don't think, you know, that's kind of a, a guy a guy kind of question because I don't. I don't remember dealing with this, but. Well, it's interesting. I was helping my sister. She lives in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and I was helping her with a, a renovation of her master bath. And we were we were on build.com, just picking some easy, uh, I think we were, we were looking at Delta or Kohler faucets. And <clears throat> I always go, so when you look at faucets, for this is just an example, okay? You have 2.5 GPM gallons per minute. You also have 1.75. Depends on where you live in the country. If you live in California, you're not getting that 2.5. And guess what? If you live in Massachusetts, you're not getting it either. So when we went to dump it in the cart and it's we had her zip code in there, Build would not ship to Massachusetts for that, that exact Crazy. faucet. So, and then recently, I was helping my parents with their master bath renovation in New York. And I ordered these Kohler Riff faucets, beautiful. And my mom calls me in a panic and says, it's taking forever for the faucets to get hot. It's taking like four minutes. The, it's There's this weird aerator restrictor on there and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, um, uh, uh, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> renovation, one of those, you know, fatigue things. And they ended up taking out their taking out their restrictor and it's kind not of, against the law like like cutting the tag off of a um, yeah mattress I, I, I if if you're in California I might not do it yeah. but New York doesn't have the same restrictions okay. and so they fiddled with the aerator and they got it they got it going but yeah you got to yeah. pay attention to once um, it, once again yeah there are just a, a lot of water saving yeah. things out there that yeah you know 
that are a construction thing that you got to do it. But you don't know. You yeah. don't know what you don't mm -hmm. know. So okay. just pay attention to that that GPM, the gallons per minute, and where you um and where you live, and just you know. Okay. Yeah. All right, Cynthia via Instagram. Okay. What is the best way to make sure you're selecting the right paint color? I'm looking for a neutral color for the main floor of my house mm -hmm. and don't know where to start. Well, we, you know, when you talk about neutrals, and if you're, we're, we're talking, let's say, whites or lighter colors, a lot of it depends on the lighting in your home. So you want to make sure that you are getting, now, Sherwin-Williams has that wonderful thing where you can order uh, paint samples that stick to the wall. Mm -hmm. And you can put those on the wall, wait, you know, day, night, afternoon, mm -hmm. put them in different places to see. So that's one way to really, there's also, if you go out to, if you go out and Google interior designers, favorite white paint colors, mm -hmm. there's, there's tons of them out there. Mm -hmm. I would go there first, see which ones they have. Every and house is different every though. House is different. Don't copy your friend because it looks yep. good in her house. It is all about your house mm -hmm. and your lighting and your light bulbs and your natural light. And it will totally totally changed. We picked, your... we picked a neutral color for a client who hadn't done anything in our home in a really long time. And they, it was a, a neutral wool skein was mm -hmm. the color. They painted it and they said, Oh my God, it looks so green. Mm. I'm like, Oh geez, let me come over and take a look at it. It was said, her light bulbs. Yep. I said, what, these are incandescent bulbs, which you can't buy anymore. And they put the LEDs in what a difference. Mm -hmm. So, it's, you know, take a look at your light bulb. Some people still have some fluorescence. Mm -hmm. Please, please, please get rid of those fluorescent bulbs. Yeah. They're they awful. Totally change on, the on colors. paint. And yeah, they're just not good. So, mm -hmm. that, that's, that would be but my suggestion. But if you suggestion. do go on to Sharon Williams, Benjamin Moore, they, they all have great sampling, yeah. um, sampling. Um, programs where you can you can get the samples or just go and buy a, a small um, you know a small can and try it and to put two coats on don't just put one yeah. because it really makes yeah. a difference so yeah. yeah yeah you don't want to make a mistake and do the entire first floor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but put it in a put it in a shady spot and a light spot so you can kind of see because the colors will change um, throughout the house yeah. Okay. Man, we're up? done. Our time is up. We, we, well, had, we had two more, but we'll we save those for the next we'll one. We'll save that for the next one. Okay. okay. That's good. That's so fun. I feel okay. like a like a teacher, like I'm, yeah. you know, well, giving you a big warm hug and helping you out. I love when I like if let's just say if there's something I've been struggling with on my phone, and then I'll ask my kid or my grandkid, and they let me <laughs> and, they, and they tell me something that I have been like I should have known a long time ago. The it's, relief. Like, the relief. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I love doing these because yeah. I feel like. Yeah, we're hopefully helping you out. <laughs> All right. This funny quote. Yeah. I, I just, I it's mean. It's so true. It maybe what will show our age, but. It will definitely show our age. Okay. Okay. Ready? So when I was a kid, we didn't have any fi fancy body wash. We all had to use the same bar of soap our dad washed his ass with. <laughs> and if we swore, we got our mouths washed, washed out with that same bar of soap. <laughs> Is that not just so true? Oh my God! My okay. my three, hopefully the three of us, three girls and my mom all in the same shower with the same bar of soap. I'm telling you, nasty. Yeah. Well, hopefully I won't get in trouble for swearing. I would never ever nowadays. Anyway, all right, ready? This is a really good serious this is quote. A good one. Listen carefully. Okay, your purpose is not the thing you do. It is the thing that happens in others when you do what you do. And that's from Dr. Caroline Leaf, who's a neuroscientist. I she she studies the way the it brain works. It is the works thing whatever. that happens in others when you do what you do. And you know what? Sometimes you might not even know that it's mm -hmm. what's happened to others. But mm -hmm. I think if you can make an impact on somebody else, isn't that what everybody you know is really trying to do? Mm -hmm. I, I love that. Quote what we try so to do much. every single day. I love day. that quote so much. Yeah. Well, All right. thank you, Atlanta Market for sponsoring this episode. We love, we're so excited to come to the markets yep. and you guys do a great job. Same thing as High Point. They really try to make it easy for designers and there's always someone there to, you know, show you the way yep. if you're lost and all that. So thank you so much. We really appreciate having you as a partner. Yes. So this is, uh, we have got one more. Do we have, we have one more for 2023. Mm -hmm. So we're gearing up for a year in review. So that'll be yeah. an awesome episode yeah. coming up and, and uh, we're heading so, into the holidays. So now. I'm sure we will do another, you know, answering your yes. questions. So please, if you even have a question today, yes, go onto the speak pipe because we can save them. I would yeah. love for at least 
four or five people, I'm challenging mm -hmm. you, four or five people, go to our speak pipe to ask us a question. Yes. And if you don't want to do that, then you just can send still. us an email to podcast at candrac-cole.com or reach out to us on any social media and we will keep them all in a pile and answer them on the next one. Okay. Thanks, Thanks for, listening. for listening. Bye. Bye. Join Joanne and Kelly for a new episode every other Friday as they continue to explore the nuances of the interior design business with the goal of informing, inspiring, and entertaining their listeners. See their work at candrac-cole.com and engage with them on Facebook and Instagram at candrac-cole.